All right. Hello, BD friends. Welcome to Leveling Up Your Wire Wrapping Skills. I am Meredith Roddy with Beadalon and Artistic Wire, and I am thrilled to be teaching today's class for the Michaels Community Classroom. What I asked everybody in the chat as we were getting started is to let me know where, what your skill level is for wire working. Are you a beginner? Are you an intermediate? Are you advanced? Um, what, what are you looking to get out of class today? Kind of next level your skills, maybe get a couple of tips and tricks. Hopefully I'll be able to share some good stuff. Um, Wireworking is an interesting journey. And I, I too have done, um, a, have had an interesting journey with wireworking. I feel like it's one of those things that I, I know the basics and I pick it up every once in a while and I make a, a really cool thing. Oh, I kind of put it down again. And then if I'm not flexing and exercising those wireworking muscles, they, they kind of atrophy. So it's the type of thing you really need to practice. And that is my first and most important lesson of the day is what we're doing today. Please don't get frustrated if your wire wraps are not looking perfect at the get go. This, this technique and what we are making today is something that that's going to take some practice and some perseverance. Um, and it also takes a lot of patients. So right before class, I was working on a, um, on a, a, an example so that we don't have to go through the rep repetitiveness of the steps over and over and over again before we get to the end, because it's probably about a two to three hour project all in, but I was rushing. I'll, I'll be be very honest with that because I think it's I think it's good to know um, to know where where we're coming from and what happens when you rush your wire work is messy wire wraps. So on my example, I took my time. I did a really nice class. I worked to make sure that my loops were really nice on the ends. Um, so that's what I'm going to be showing more often. Um, but we. Um, we are going to, to, we're going to go on this journey together. So I've just cleaned my glasses off. And um, I think without further ado, we are ready to come down to the beading mat and go over the materials that we are going to need for class today. Now, the instructions for this project were posted when you signed up for class. They will also be posted step-by-step by, step by Yvette, who is hanging out in the chat room. She is also from, um, from Beadalon and she will answer any questions you have. Of course, during the live class, this class is being recorded. So when you are re-watching the class on the Michaels YouTube channel, unfortunately, you won't be able to ask any questions, um, but you can feel free to reach out out to me at Beadalon or at Meredith Joy Designs. Um, those are our two kind of ways to, to get in touch with us on the socials. Um, and I think that is all I have to say about the instructions. Um, Yvette can also post them as a PDF, but if you are watching from a, um, from a mobile device, like a phone or an iPad, you unfortunately won't be able to access the instructions in PDF form during class. So for class today, what we are going to need is, first of all, we're going to need a ruler. Um, any, any measuring device will do um, for a ruler. We are also going to be needing two different kinds of wire. So we are used to working with round wire, right? That's what we make our wrap loops with, our um, simple loops, our wire wrapping things that we've done in other classes that we have um, that we have done. But this actually is wire that is square and half round. So this is what we're using German style wire. And this is what the packaging will look like in the store. It will actually say 20 gauge up here, but I only had one in the packaging that was 21 gauge at my house. So I apologize. It will say 21, 20 or 22 gauge actually in Michael's, um, but it is half round. And you can see that dome shaped here. That is what the wire actually looks like that it's flat on one side and a semicircle or a dome on the other side. And that is the wire that you use to wrap around. The square wire is the wire that we're going to be using today as our frame. So there are so many different ways that you can use 
round or half round wire and square square wire and also of course um, round wire this is one of those ways and this is one of those ways in a specific way in a project so don't get bogged down also with oh i kind of do that a little bit differently than meredith does um if if you, the result is what you enjoy it, what what is pleasing to your eye then that's fantastic um if it is not pleasing to your eye and you're interested in kind of learning learning a little bit of a different way of doing it uh, you have come to the right place so now that we're we're looking down at this piece um, properly you can see where the half round wire sits and then where that square wire sits and i'm going to try to get as close of a focus as i can but you can kind of see on that square wire too that it is in fact a square shape so that's what we're going to be using for our base and we'll be using our half round wire to do our wrapping um, and those are the only two wires that we're going to need the beads that i'm using today are these beads they are the glass beads they are let's see black glass ab four millimeter by eight millimeter rectangle and they're these really really pretty um uh, AB, they're kind of like a, almost like an oily finish to them in all of these different colors. And the reason why I chose these beads is because they have these flat sides to them. I'm just trying to get a good flat side there. You can see that reflection right there. These flat sides are going to make it very nice and very tidy and easier to do our wire wrapping because the square wire is going to lay right flat on that on that flat side and that's why you want to use the round wire i'm sorry the square wire and a flat bead rather than a round wire and a round bead because if you think about it clearly logically the round things are going to slip and when you're doing wire wrapping you have to hold enough things steady and you have to have enough things non-slippery so the last thing that you want to do is also use round wire that's going to make it even more challenging so these are the rectangle beads that i'm using but there are lots of different options and i actually picked up just a couple of um, different beads i haven't played around with these ones yet but lots of bead um, possibilities with flat sides are really going to be what you want to use for um for a project like this especially if you are just starting out so the other beads that i'm using here is or are i should say these little guys these are metal beads and they are silver plated dot rondelles and i should show the part number too here let me just bring this one back up to show the part number as well. Um, so you can see if you want to, um, to get exactly the ones that I am using today. But again, as I say with most all of my projects, feel free to use what's in your stash, to use a different color if that is what speaks to you. Um, but I would recommend, especially as you are learning, um, to, to go with a bead that is flat on the side. Also, not too big and not too small. So I, I scoured the, the bead wallet at Michael's for you. And if you have these particular beads in um, in your Michael's or in another Michael's, I did have to go to another Michael's for this pro to, to finish this project also, um, they're gonna be the best ones for you. So then the tools that you will need for this, pro for this project, um, are the, your standard tools. So a sparkle ch or a chain nose plier is going to be your best friend. This is the sparkle one, which is the perfect jaw um, for what we're going to be doing with this. And these rondelle spacers are, does it tell me what they are? I think they're four millimeters. Let's find out. I'm going to measure them down. Yep, they're four millimeter daisy spacers because the um, the beads here are four millimeters on the end. So you'll, you'll see once I start um, working with them. And I would not recommend using brown beads with this project. And you will see as we go along, why not? Okay, so then I have um, a nipper tool because we're gonna be doing a lot of cutting of our wire. I have the nylon 
jaw pliers because we are going to be doing a lot of straightening of our wire. Um, I always like to have on hand a bent chain nose plier. Um, and you'll see why um, as I'm doing my wire wrapping as well, why that bent no chain nose plier is really, really helpful for this project. And then um, last but not least, some round nose pliers. So kind of everything that, that is a normal, um, a normal tool that you would have that you should have in your toolbox. And I see that Yvette is very kindly putting links in the um, in the the um, the chat. Oh my goodness, in the chat um, toward all of the things that um, that we are going to be using today. Um, and this class, we're going to make that free form with our round nose pliers and our bent chain nose pliers. So that will be the last thing that we make in class today. So we've gone over a couple of initial tips and tricks. We have gone over all of the materials that we need. So now I think I'm gonna create a little bit of room on my, on my beading surface here. And let's also straighten that out. That looks a little bit better, right? Um, and we're gonna get started. So the first thing we need to do is take our square wire. So again, we're not using round wire for this project. We're using square wire. And I'm going to cut three 10 inch pieces of square wire. So if, if, you, if you play along and you've taken my classes before, you know that when I say 10 inches, I'd like to cut a generous 10 inches. Um, it is always better um, I can't think of a time that, well, I don't, I don't like speaking in absolutes. It is mostly always better um, to have a little bit extra of any kind of material that you're using if, you can, if it is a comfortable length. So that's my caveat. You don't want to have too much because um, you, it could get you know, bent out of shape or um, it could hinder your design process, but you definitely don't want your wire to be too short when you're doing this project. So a generous 10 inches, if you have a really, um, a really, uh, a, a larger wrist, um, you might want to go a little bit more than that. Um, but for an average size wrist, 10 inches is, is plenty because this around is, you know, about seven and a half inches. So we have plenty of extra wiggle room on either side because these three wires are going to serve as the base for our bracelet. So that this part right here, this frame is what we are creating with those three wires. And you can see, I made two very different sizes of, um, of bracelets. So the first one I made um, much smaller than the second one. I do have a smaller wrist and I always say that um, wrist size is not necessarily indicative of um, a person's size, but you all, you know, you want to make sure that, that you're making this for either the right size for your wrist or um, the right size for the rest of the person that you are making it for. So now what I do with these is I, I we need to, to make them a little bit straighter. So I like to straighten my wire in two different ways. The first way is by using my blurry on screen right now, there we go, my nylon jaw pliers. And I am going to be moving and doing all of my movements today very, very slowly because I find that when I'm working with wire, the smaller and more incremental the movements that I make, the better my wire work turns out. So I'm also using my fingers to straighten out this wire. Will it be perfectly ramrod straight like a pencil? No, but I want it to just get as straight as it can because that is what is going to make my job easier once I start doing my wire wrapping. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. It's not great, it's not perfect, but pretty good to me. So I'm gonna do that with all three of my wires. So again, I'm just very slowly dragging those nylon jaws along the wire and you can see how that gets it nice and straight as opposed to that side, which I haven't done yet. 
So let me go ahead and do this side. Um, there, and I really recommend, especially if wire working is, or working with really any wire, even if you're working with head pens, a nylon jaw plier is an, 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 a, a tool that needs to be in your toolbox. I use my nylon jaw pliers all the time, whether I'm making ear wires or I'm making a head pin or I'm linking beads together um, in any, any way. It's just, it's the tool that you need to be able to straighten your wire. If you are trying to make along with me today and you don't have, um, you can use your fingers, um, but the, I always, um, I always go back to my, my dad's advice, um, which is always use the right tool and the best tool for the job. Um, and in this case, the nylon jaw pliers are definitely the right and best tool for the job. All right, so now I'm just kind of running my fingers to make sure that there aren't any bumps <coughs> or any kind of weird, wonky, wiggly places in my wire. And I am ready to move on to the next step. So the gauge of wire I'm using, I'm using 20 gauge square wire and I will be wrapping it with 20 gauge half round wire. I don't recommend straightening all three wires together um, because it won't work. <laughs> if you can make it work, that is more power to you. But I, I cannot make it work um, to get them all from wonky separately to straight together. Okay, so now what we're ready to do is, um, is to make a temporary wrap. Now, once again, my disclaimer is that different people do wire working differently. So some people, um, some people use masking tape to hold all of their wires together. And if that is something that makes your wire working journey easier, I definitely recommend it. I don't use masking tape to hold my wires together when I am, um, when I am doing wire work. So I'm not going to be showing that today. But if it's something that you think might be helpful for you, I definitely, definitely recommend it. So now what I'm doing is I am, um, I'm going to use a piece of half round wire and I am going to do, as I said, a temporary wrap. So the way that I do that is I take my, not my, um, my chain nose pliers and I, once again, I like these, um, sparkle handled pliers because they have a really nice narrow jaw. I've cut about a three inch length of this half round wire. I found that three inches is just about the perfect size for doing five wraps around. So on each of these times that I have wrapped in between my beads, I have wrapped five times. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. Five, there we go. You can see the five times um, and three inches is about perfect for that. If you wanna do four, awesome. If you wanna do seven, that is your prerogative. For this design, I did five and I, that's what, what was pleasing to my eye. So to get started, what we're going to do is just hold the end of the half round wire about a quarter, about an eighth of an inch, quarter to an eighth of an inch. Um, I'm sorry, a, yeah, a quarter, an eighth of an inch to a quarter from the end. And I'm going to turn it down in a hook. I know I made that way more complicated than it needed to be. Um, but all I'm doing is I'm turning that in a little hook because what that little hook is going to do is grab on to that wire. And it's actually what I've just noticed is the wire that I pulled out is actually round wire. It's not half round wire. So I'm gonna put this step as this wire aside um, and I am going to just open up this pack that I have over here on the side 
um, because now I can see, yes, of course that is half round wire. And it's one of those things that, that sometimes to, even to a trained eye, um, you grab the wrong, the wrong thing. So apologies for that. So let's try with this with the right wire now. I know, right, Janelda, thank you very much. I have to, you have to give you a, a little buzz into my studio here. So when I'm doing something that is not quite right, you can, you can help me out. All right, here we go, back on track. So now I'm going to do just this little hook here in my half round wire. And you can see now, because I'm going to be wrapping these three wires, these three square wires together, why it's important for them to be roughly the same, um, the same uh, straight, straightenedness, <laughs> the same amount of straight. Okay, so I'm gonna hook this over like this. So I have all three wires hooked together. And as I mentioned, this is a temporary wrap. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you are a perfectionist, I, I allow you to make it perfect. Um, it'll help save a, save a step later on. Um, but what I find is that it's easier to undo this after you have gotten started. Okay, so now what I have done is I've taken my bent chain nose pliers and I'm holding them over that hook. And I'm going to get everything kind of back squared away once I show it. But you can see how helpful it is that those jaws bend out of the way for two reasons. One, you can see what you're doing. And two, what I need to do is wrap this down and next to that other wrap, which didn't work at all. So what I'm going to do is just kind of come back in here and straighten this back out. Sometimes when you are talking through things and demonstrating them, they don't quite work out. And that is why I always make my first wrap as a temporary wrap because it can get it can get a little wonky it can get a little frustrating all i need to do is get these three square wires together at one point when i where i'm going to start my wrapping now sometimes when i do this i start in the middle and i work one side to another side but then i have to make sure that my first wrap is perfect because you can't really go back and undo it when it's in the middle. I mean, you could, but not, not fun. And when I wrap this, the flat part is what is against this square wire and the round part or that, um, that semi-circle part is what is on top. Because not only is that what is gonna make it look pretty, but that's why we're using the, the, the square wire and then the half round wire so that our wires sit next to each other and, um, and, and come together in a, in a happy way. Okay, so now what we're going to do is after we've made this temporary wrap, and I make my temporary wrap about five wraps, just because if I'm gonna make all of my wraps, five wraps, I may as well just kind of get into the habit of doing that right off the bat. And then we can go ahead, I'm not gonna cut it all the way off, but I am going to cut that a little bit shorter just so that it's not in my way. And I might even end up, actually, you know what? We're just gonna keep going and snip it close. Because again, temporary first wrap. Does it need to look pretty? No. Does mine look pretty? No, because we are going to be taking it off um, in, in the last, last step. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, of course, we are going to start the fun part, which is adding the beads. So once we've done all of the prep, we are ready to add the beads and get started. So what I have done is I've created a little, a little station, a little, um, a little grouping of one daisy spacer, one rectangle bead, and one daisy spacer. So that I'm going to consider one unit. Um, and each one has that same, that same number. So daisy spacer, rectangle bead, daisy spacer. So I'm gonna go ahead and onto the middle wire. So you always wanna make sure, and it becomes very obvious very quickly, which wire is the middle wire. You just wanna make sure that each time you put the bead on the middle wire. And if you want to, if, um, if, one of, uh, if, if you keep going on a side wire, for example, just bend these over. 
um, you know, just a little bend over at the end, just so that you'll know visually which one is your middle wire. Um, but in, in the final analysis, it's really not, not such a big deal. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down to as close as I can get to that wrap, but I don't, I don't need, need to worry about um, it being any, really any closer than this, because remember, we're taking this, we're taking this off. Um, it just, it makes the whole starting process so much easier if you're not worrying about making that first wrap perfect. So to me, and those of you who are in the group who are more intermediate to advanced, you can chime in and let me know if you agree with me or not. Most of wire work to me is um, zhuzhing. <laughs> so it's these little teeny tiny movements to make sure that the wire is where I want it to be. So what I'm doing right now is I'm zhuzhing my wire and I'm zhuzhing my bead so that my, my square wire is laying flat on the flat part of the bead. So I don't want it on the square part here. I don't want it on the diamond part here. I want it on the flat part here because that's really what's creating that cool design um, that, that makes that bracelet look so neat once it's finished. So I'm just kind of judging here to make sure that those wires aren't smushing in that they're they're next to each other and they're happy. And again, I'm not worrying about anything down here at all because we're gonna we're coming back to that at the end. So now I'm ready to start my next wire wrap. So once again, I'm gonna come in and you can cut all of your pieces of half round wire um, to th about three three and a half inches beforehand if you want, um, but you might find that you're more comfortable with a longer piece. So play around with it a little bit to see if three, three and a half inches is the right one for you or if you need just a little bit more to work with. All right, so again, and I did this step with my chain nose pliers. You could do it with the bent chain nose pliers if they happen to be on your hand, like mine just were, um, but I'm just gonna bend this down just a little bit <clears throat> because what that is going to do, that little hook is hooking onto my wire um, to do my next wrap. So here I am, I'm going to hook that wire on and you wanna make sure, and I'm gonna stress this a couple of different times as we go along, but you wanna make sure that your hook is always hooking the same way every time. So you always want your the back of your hook to be on the, the back all the way across your bracelet. But more, more on that in a moment. Okay, so now here's where the zhuzhing happens because our goal, right, is to get this, this wrap even. <clears throat> um, the goal is to get the wrap with, without marring or twisting or otherwise damaging your wire. Um, and wrapping it around, right? So unlike a wrapped loop, <clears throat> we are actually more like folding it, okay? So I wanna try to hold these three wires so that they're nice and even, nice and even. I think we can show that, right? Nice and even. And I've got this held in place with my, my, my finger and I'm gonna bend this down with my thumb. And this is where the judging part really comes into play. Because what I'm actually going to do is use my pliers to press each of these wraps into place as I am making them. And sometimes it is easier said than shown in the camera, but I'm gonna do my very best. So each time I come around, I'm zhuzhing, zhuzhing this wire. So I'm pushing it down and it helps also to turn your work to get nice tight wraps. And if your first wrap is not as tight as you would like it, um, A, practice, B, don't demonstrate during class, <laughs> and C, you can actually also and I'll show this in a couple of steps. You can, you can undo that and then tighten it up again. 
But what is going to start to end up happening here is your wires are going to want to come together because we're, we're wrapping them and we're putting pressure on them when we're wrapping them. And we don't really want that to happen. So what I like to do is use my next station of beads, my next grouping of beads to, 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 um, get the right amount of space in. So after I do two wraps, I'm gonna come up here and I'm actually going to, to string on one daisy spacer, one bead, and then one daisy spacer. And all these beads are doing is just hanging out and being a, um, uh, what's the, what, what do I want to say? Being a, a way to make sure that the wire is nicely spaced. So I've done my two wraps. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue until I have five wraps total. And I want to make sure that I end with one of those with, I'm sorry, I want to make sure that I end with the wrap on the back. And the back is where this, the back is where this little guy is. Okay. And we're going to fix that little bump there because nobody likes that little bump. Right. Um, and I have about, I would say about two inches here, two, to two to three inches, um, in the very beginning here, uh, two to three inches, um, because all this in the beginning is going to become this in the end. So you just need to make sure that you have enough here <clears throat> to, um, to be able to do that in the end. Okay, so I need to keep going along here. And again, these, these um, beads, you can see I'm kind of pushing them in and just making sure with my fingers that that wire is not, is not getting out of space. So you don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. You really wanna to try to keep that wire as, um, as straight as you possibly can. And one of the best tools I can recommend for wire work, besides the nylon jaw pliers, of course, are your fingers. One, two, three, four. And <clears throat> you can see that I'm really using the pliers as an extension of my hands and my fingers. So this is one of those techniques where it really, you really feel your materials. Um, you really kind of get get comfy and cozy with the materials that you are working with. Um, and that has its, its advantages because you can really feel what that wire is doing, but it can also have its challenges because the wire, you, you can you know very easily bend that wire out of place. Um, but the good thing is that mo most of the time you can show your wire who's box and get that wire to go back into place for you. So I've done my five wraps and I'm gonna come in here with my cutter and I'm gonna snip off and leave about three eighths of an inch. And all this amount of wire is going to do is sit here on the back, okay? So it's a good idea to do it so it's about as long as it, it can reach that center wire. But if it doesn't, don't, don't sweat that, don't sweat it. And it should just tuck down really nicely and then never be heard from again. So let's come back and address this little part here that's bumping out because that will sometimes happen. So what you wanna do is just as gently and as carefully as you can come in here with your flat nose pliers and pick, pull it up. Hold on, let me see. I'm going to actually be able to see that. There we go. So, and pull it up. And then again, just small incremental movements, zhuzh it around, pull it around, and back down. And I'm actually even going a little bit faster than I might go normally. That's another really important takeaway message. I mentioned it in the very beginning, um, but wire work is slow and steady wins the race. It is not a rush through to the end um, because getting your wire straight and even is definitely, um, it, it definitely, it, it, takes, it takes the judging. That's four times I think I've said just so far. <laughs> we can do a, a tally to the end. 
Um, okay, so now that is um, our first kind of official wire wrap, because remember, this is all waste here. And let's go ahead and do and do one more. And then we'll be ready to move on to our ending. Because all that happens next <clears throat> is a repetitive, a repetitive, um, oh, here it is. <laughs> Looking for my half round wire is that a repetitive uh, or repeating that step over and over again and, <coughs> um, and until you get to the end. All right, so we're gonna do this one last time. Um, and I keep reaching for my, my bent chain nose pliers, which you can use this also, but the round or the, um, the chain nose ones just really have the perfect, the perfect little bend right there. Um, in the end to make that hook. And again, there are a couple of different ways to, to do this little part. So if you have a, a way that works better for you, if you've got kind of a hack or a, a special way that works, um, that that's awesome. I would love, I would love to see and hear um, how you do it. Okay. So once again, this is always my, my hardest part is holding these three wires straight and getting that first wrap really nice, nice and tight, but not too tight. So um, for those of you who take my classes a lot, which are generally on two o'clock PM Eastern time um, on Wednesdays, you know that, um, that I, I always say there's, there's usually one part of every project that's the trickiest. For me, that's the one that's the trickiest. It's, um, it's getting that first, that first um, wrap really nice and tight, which is why I often will go back and fix it at the end. Okay, so I have my two done and you can even see even right now, these wires, they just wanna come in. They wanna get close to each other. They wanna snuggle next to each other, but we don't want that. We want them, we want them to be apart, unfortunately for them. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna put on my, um, my daisy spacer, my square bead, and my daisy spacer and pull those down. And they're just, they're, they're keeping those wires nice and separate. And once, once you get the first wrap down, this one really, they want, they want to line up. They want to line up and be, and stand at attention. This one's um, went in next to those wires. So, so well. Uh, Wanda, who's uh, one of our, our beady friends, just made a great comment in the comments. She said, keep your wires socially distanced. Yes, those wires need to stay apart. That's a good one. I like that. We'll keep our wires socially distant. And you can also see as I'm doing this, I am, I'm moving my piece around, I'm flipping it, I'm turning it, I am using my fingers, I'm using my tool. So it really is a very tactile, very hands-on technique to do these wire wraps. And again, just so slow, using my fingers, twisting it around, I'm coming this way, I'm moving it this way, and I'm really watching um, very closely to see what I'm doing. I was a little nervous actually before class at how I was going to make sure that both you and I would be able to see, um, because this is one of those projects that that I, um, when I teach it, really, really need to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, but I think we've, we've been able to, to make all of the things happen. And you can see um, also it, to that same point, because it's so important to be able to see what you're doing, why those bent chain nose pliers are so great. And sometimes I use them this way. Sometimes I use them this way. It really depends on what I need them for. And again, I'm just, I'm really struggling with getting that little, that first one. So I'm just gonna bop it back out again. And I'm gonna do that just to show you how easy it is to do, maybe. Again, just super, super small movement and pulling that out and just squishing it back around because why am I gonna worry about getting that, that bend perfect the first time if it's being a challenge and I can just come back 
and fix it when I'm done with those wraps. Okay. Um, and just to point out before we move on to the, um, ooh, that's very nice the way that glare is hitting that. You can see right here, hold on, let me grab, where's my all, here it is. You can see right up here and right down here, both of those cuts are on the back here and then right up here and right down here, both of the cuts are on the back. So you wanna make sure as you're going along that all of your little cuts there are on the back. And then you can also come in here, you can see I just kind of squished that up and got rid of all of that extra space. So if you have a little bit of extra space in there, um, you know how I feel about wiggle room. It's always important when you're doing crimping, but sometimes you don't want that wiggle room in, in there quite as much. Um, and again, that's what's so great about the wire work is you can generally kind of move these around a little bit before you get everything finished up and move it into place. Okay, so um, I just got one of the best compliments an instructor can get um, from Paula. She said, it looks great. I thought this is going to be really difficult. You have made it so easy. Um, I very much appreciate that, Paula. And I think that that is a good lesson for all of us, especially when it comes to wire work, is you just, you just have to break it down, do it slowly, have patience, and um, if you're me, you get to cooking show it <laughs> and come all the way here. And we have all of these already done. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight done here. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually do one more for nine. So where are my examples? There they are. So on my bigger example, I actually have 10. 10 beads, which is perfect for my wrist. This one I did with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beads. So that one's way too small um, for, for any, anybody, but we're in class. So we're just going to do one more and call it a day. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one, um, this wrap really quickly here, bring that around to the back, snip it off and bend it down just like that. And I am not gonna worry about going back and fixing that first one because we showed how to do that a couple times. It looks like my little friends came off. So I'm gonna put one on and one more. Yep, so in the instructions, I mentioned adding um, adding 10 beads. So 10 beads yields a bracelet, depending on how big all of your extra stuff is, that is gonna fit about a seven inch wrist. Okay, I have like a seven inch wrist, kind of in a bangly kind of way. So that'll give you a good sense of how many beads you should put on. Um, you could also certainly measure it. Um, I'm going to leave that on my wrist right now. So when I can't find it later on, someone in the comments can let me know that I left, put it on my wrist. <laughs> that'll, that'll be fun. I can wait for that to happen. Okay, so I'm just going to pull out just another piece of my half round wire from over here and bend down my little end. And you want to make sure that you get that end. See, I'm always reaching for my chinos or my bent chinos pliers. You want to make sure that that bend is really as small as those those jaws will allow. That will really help you um, get a, a nicer first bend. But again, you don't need to necessarily worry that much about that first bend because we showed how to fix it a couple different times. Okay, so once again, we're going to wrap this twice. And for the last wrap, I would still recommend putting, um, would I recommend? No, I would not. Okay, so this is the last wrap that we're doing right now. And what I would actually recommend is not putting the beads in like we did before, because what we wanna do 
we're bringing those wires together to finish off our bracelet. So I made, let's see how many wraps are here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I made seven wraps here at the end. Um, and you can do five, you can do seven, you can do however many that you want. Um, but what you wanna do is wrap it up and start kind of breathing a sigh of relief because we got all of those nice wraps done and we are ready to finish off. And you can see this wire is kind of wiggling around. And part of the reason why it's doing that is because I'm not coming in and giving it a little smush each time. Um, and that is really helpful for getting nice, um, nice, tight and consistent wraps. You want to, each time you make a wrap around, you want to give it a little, a little hit with your pliers. And I'm going to go, this is not the prettiest work I've ever done, but we're getting the, we're getting the hang of things. You do want to make sure that these three wires here do not cross though. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to bend them apart just a little bit because that's where we're eventually going. I don't want them crossing and I don't want them twisting. So in order to do that, I just move them kind of a, in a little bit of a, a way aside, aside from themselves. Got them back a little, a little socially distanced. Okay, so now what I've done is I have gradually brought that wire together and I don't like what's happening here. So I'm just gonna kind of pull that up. There we go. And once again, um, as, you, as you saw, I, I didn't like what was happening. I didn't like what I saw. So I tightened it up and I just judged that wire around. So don't, don't get frustrated if you do a wrap and you're like, oh, that does not look the way that I wanted it to. Almost, almost always, at least a lot of the time, you can fix it. Like I'm coming back here with this wrap here and I'm going to fix it. Okay, so bear with me, friends. And I'm actually gonna snip that off too because it's a little bit longer than I want it to be. Okay, so let's get that. And that little part here is gonna tighten up in our next step. Oh, okay. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna pull this down. I'm actually going to snip off this long end because I don't need it. And I'm going to come and bring this around and I can actually snip that off just a little bit more. And put that down. Okay, perfect. So now what we're going to do is we are going to separate these wires like this. Okay, so I've got two coming out at 45 degree angles and I have one coming straight ahead. And I think in the um, instructions, I go back and I do this side, but since we're already here, we're just gonna go ahead and, and do this side. It doesn't really matter which one you do first, I don't think. We'll find out in a second if I've ruined everything. So now what we're gonna do, we just did this part here, right? That little wrap. Now we're going to make these two little loops and then this loop here at the top. And these are just simple, loops. If you can see, um, there's nothing fancy. They're not wrapped. Um, but because we're using this 20 gauge wire underneath, they should be fine. We shouldn't have any problems with these loops. And you can make these as decorative, as fancy, as swirly, as simple as you possibly, um, as you possibly can imagine. I'm just going to go simple today. So we're going to cut about Let's see, what do, I, what do I say here in the instructions? About a half, an, a half of an inch. So I'm actually going to use my measuring device. I very rarely actually use my measuring device. So we're gonna do a half of an inch here. Oops, let's make sure we can all see that, right? I mentioned that it's, this is one of those projects that we all have to be able to see, most importantly me. <laughs> okay, so I'm cut that. So we've got one, two, three in um, in 45 degree angles, the two on the side, and then the one is coming straight up. And so now what we, all we need to do is make a couple of loops to either side. 
So you can either use round nose pliers. I like using bell making pliers <coughs> to do this step. Um, it's really, it's, it's kind of totally up to you. Um, so let's go ahead because more, more people have round nose pliers than bail making pliers. And I am going to bend the wires down so that they meet here. And I'm, the way that I'm going to do that, I'm just going to use small incremental movements. So see how I am holding the wire in the pliers and I'm just gently rotating the plier around like that. I'm not grabbing it and rotating it all the way around. Um, really good tip for making any anything round um, or really any any wire work at all. Um, small, like again, small incremental movements, not big movements of your wrist. And I'm going to do the same thing. I've worked on this side. Now I'm just going to flip it over just like that, and I'm going to do that same thing. So grab this on the end. And move this in and kind of make sure that it's generally symmetrical, right? Not too, too bad. And then for this nice round, the, the bigger part in the center, I want to do the same, the same thing. But what I actually want to do first is I just want to judge that wire over just a little bit. It's tough because we're working with with three wires in here and we want to make sure nothing gets too too wonky or too out of place. But I'm just kind of coming in here and moving it over to the side so I can make myself a nice loop. So once again, small little movements, just kind of moving this guy down into place to make sure that he is the way I want him to be. And maybe I want him to be a little bit bigger. Maybe I want the other ones to be a little bit smaller. Maybe I want to move these down out of the way a little bit. That is really where kind of your design aesthetic comes into play. So let me just move this guy around a little bit. And there we have it on one side. Perfect. All right. So coming down the home stretch guys. And <clears throat> at this point, you can kind of start bending your bracelet into place. And by kind of start, I mean, start bending your bracelet into place um, because you wanna make sure what's gonna happen is sometimes, and this is why now I remember why we wanna do this side first, but it's okay, it's gonna work out, no problem. Is um, I had mentioned earlier that the, the beads and the wire will slide a little bit. And once you start putting the curve of the bracelet into the bracelet, into the wire, um, those beads and that wire are gonna move around a little bit. So you wanna make sure just the, in the same kind of philosophy or the same thought of when you're crimping, you wanna make sure that your bracelet is in the shape that you want it to be before you tighten everything up. Um, because if you try to force things, then beads that are glass and beads that have um, flat edges, like our beads that we're working with today, can very easily uh, crack or, um, or like little pieces of the sides can break off. It's just the nature of the beads. They're, they're fragile. You have to be kind to your beads. And I, I didn't even need a mandrel for forming my bracelet into a, um, an oval shape. You can certainly use a bracelet mandrel for that if you want. Um, I don't think that bracelet bending pliers are the right tool for this job because of the way that the beads are. It's just kind of not gonna work. Um, but just, you know, gently, again, kind of judging it's those small incremental movements um, to get the bracelet into the form that you want. And now it's time at long last to get rid of this nasty, <coughs> the nasty um, wrap that we did on that one side that we were just using to, to hold everything together so we could get started. And now, since we've done so much great practice on our wire wrapping, with the half round wire over the square wire, 
we can go ahead and redo that wiring. You saw I literally just slid it off um, and we're going to go and make that wire pretty now or make that wire wrap pretty. All right, so once again, I think I squished that against itself. You definitely don't wanna do that. I'm actually gonna snip that off just to make my life easier and try that one more time. You know it's a good project because I've got a good kind of a beady mess going on over here on my bead mat. That's a little little wire wire ends and edges from snipping them off. Okay, so now again, just like we did on the other side, our goal is to wrap this around and bring those three wires together. So now they they don't need to be socially distanced. They can they can give each other a hug. They can come in. And um, maybe they're, they're members of the same family now. <laughs> they, were, they were strangers at the grocery store in the middle, but now they are part of the same family so they can come together. But we wanna make sure that they come together actually in a wrapping motion. So let's pay attention to what we're doing, shall we? There we go, okay. And again, sometimes the wire is like, no, nah, I wanna go this way. You just have to tell it, no, <laughs> you're going to go where I want you to go. And oftentimes it's going to involve um, kind of assessing the situation, figuring out, this is a little getting in my way. I made that a little long. And of figuring out where you want that wire to go and using your fingers and your tools to make sure. So I don't remember what happened over on this side. So let's count again. We're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. I did seven wraps on that side. I always tend to like an odd number in my beading. So whether it be if I'm hanging, you know, a pendant or um, doing something in a pattern and you can see I'm kind of pulling this. This is where everything really needs to get tightened up. So I'm being a little more forceful with my wire than perhaps I had been in the beginning because I need things to be to be tightened up now. So I like an, an odd number. I think it is more visually pleasing to my eye, um, but you might disagree. You might think that even is the way to go. So um, I, I go allow you to go with your, your gut on that one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to do one more, four, seven. And um, the pliers are, are holding these three wires together, but really the wire itself and the pressure of the wire wrapping together is what's bringing the wires together. Um, because this is square wire, it wants to, to line up nicely in order. And so um, the, the wires really do want to come together rather than be apart. So since we don't have those beads that are holding the wire apart like we did before when we were doing our wraps, now we've got the wire that wants to, wants to nestle together. And I'm just tucking that, that end in, but for some reason my this wire is really not, not, wanting to go where I want it to go. So we're just gonna, gonna work with it and zhuzh it around and push that into place. And this is really, this last step that I'm gonna do right here is what's gonna lock that, that, that wrap in and prevent it from moving. So if your wire for whatever reason is really giving you a hard time, you can just go ahead and kind of pull, pull that back while, while pulling this out. So very quickly, since we already did this on the first time and I do wanna to get to making the class and we are just about coming up on the end of class. So hopefully you'll be able to stick with me until the very end. I'm gonna trim these down, do some quick rolls out to the side here and out to the side here. And we do have on the docket some um, 
both intermediate and advanced um, and, and beginner wire working classes. So I would definitely recommend um, hanging out on the Michaels Community Classroom um, page at michaels.com to see what we have coming up. Um, the June and July classes are going to be chock full of wire work. So if it is something that is your bag, I definitely recommend um, being a part of, uh, of the classes for that. We're gonna do lots of tips and tricks. We're gonna talk about um, wire gauges and um, what you use each wire gauge for. Um, so lots of really fun stuff coming up on the Michaels Community Classroom. So our last step, and, and hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised at how quick this is, I'm taking another piece of square wire, it's that 20 gauge square wire, I'm cutting a four inch piece. And what now what I'm going to do is make this, oh, okay, so on this I have a, um, a loop clasp, but what we're going to be doing today is we're going to make this really funky Z clasp. Okay. So this is my absolute favorite clasp to do. Um, and that is what we are going to be making today. So square wire, round nose pliers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my round nose pliers and I am going to turn a loop. So, and I'm turning the loop um, away from myself. And I got a little, little bent out of space. So again, if your loop gets a little um, bent out of space, then we just put it back the way that we want it to be. And now with a couple of bends, we're going to bend once like this. Okay, so I put in a 90 degree bend here. I realized that I totally picked up the round wire, um, but that's 100%, okay. And now I'm gonna come and I'm going to do the first part of my Z here. Actually, it looks a little bit better, I think, if we do it like that. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to bend, oops, I'm gonna bend that just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna bend this back. At 90 degrees, you can start seeing that it's starting to look like a Z. And I'm gonna come back here about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna bend it up like that. And then I'm going to snip at about, about a little bit down from where that Z ends. And you always wanna make sure, just a quick tip for those of you who are sticking it out, you always wanna make sure that when you cut, you cut with the flat end of your flush cutters um, against what's staying on your piece. So that way this will be flat. If you cut it like this upside down, this part will be, will be pokey and you don't want it to be pokey. And so now I'm gonna come in here. I'm just gonna bend that part back in a, um, and I'm realizing that I made that a little bit too small because I was showing that extra, that extra cut. So we're gonna do that one more time. And I'm actually going to use, am I gonna use the square wire for it? Is this the square wire? I think this is the square wire. I'm gonna do that just a little bit longer, but it's always good to see things more than one time, right? So let's try that one last time. So let's see, I bent it away from myself. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm going to make my, oh wait, hold on. <laughs> Meredith is getting flustered. Let's first straighten this up. And make a circle on the end. Then we're gonna bend this back like that. Yes, okay. Oh my goodness. So see, sometimes it even happens to the teachers. All of a sudden we're like, wait a second, I've done this a gazillion times. How in the world do I make my Z class? But we're, I'm back on track. Not to worry. All right, so back like that. And then up like that. 
Okay. And so instead of getting trigger happy and cutting everything off, I am now going to cut it to length and then come back and make my nice loop. Woo, that was, that was a little stressful there. Okay, so now what I would do with this before I, um, before I used it as a class is use a chasing hammer or a nylon jaw hammer and a bench block if you have one and just give it a little a little pound to work hard in it. You can also achieve that with a um, with a nylon jaw pliers. You just want to kind of um, work work it a little bit, work that metal, compress the molecules a little bit to do what we call in the wire working field, work harden it, because that will um, that will make that that clasp a little little stronger, right? Okay, so now we have this cool fun Z clasp. And if it fits through on one end, awesome. And so then what I like to do here is just close it, close it up. And then over here, it can link on. So one side is closed and one side is open, or you can leave them both open. That's totally up to you. Um, but then you kind of have this fun, fun little um, uh, contrast because this is very um, geometric and very straight with the nice loops here along with the geometry and the, um, the, uh, the, square and the rectangle here. So I don't know, I just, I thought that that was a fun, fun way to finish everything off. And now that I'm actually looking at just a, one last tip because of the way that I'm using this clasp, what you actually wanna do, and we can just rotate it, this loop really easily, is have this loop be facing up. And that's one of the things that we have talked about a couple of times in different classes is about how you, we need our loops to face when we, are, um, when we are adding and attaching things together. So a couple of things as we have finished up our class, we wanna make sure that um, if you do make your own, as Yvette posted in the comments, please tag Beetleon um, and make it with Michaels to show your creations. Jimena, if you are um, there and ready, there we go. Now we're back up to, to the front facing camera. Um, so yes, uh, please do. If you have learned from today, if you have enjoyed this class, please make the project and go ahead and post it on your socials. Um, definitely tag Beetleon um, or a hashtag Beetleon, hashtag make it with Beetleon. And then of course, hashtag make it with Michaels. So um, this class um, will be posted on the Michaels YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. The instructions as well will be posted on the Beetle on website. So if for whatever reason you weren't able to get the instructions for this project, uh, double check either probably by the end of the day tomorrow, I will have them posted over on in the learning center on the Beetleon website. So once again, I am Meredith Roddy from Beetleon. Our classes for the Michaels Community Classroom are on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time and every other Saturday as well. Sarah Ellis is the instructor for us on Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So be sure to check the Michaels Community Classroom page on their website to sign up for the Beetle on classes, but also there are so many amazing classes by other makers as well. I know I've taken a lot of those classes and learned a lot from them as well. So again, thank you everybody so so much for joining me. I hope that I did make it look easy. It is, it looks complicated, but with a little practice, a little perseverance, and a little patience, anybody can do some next level wire wrapping. So thanks again, and until next time, happy beating.